to Mary Ben, K Ben, say, check in with everybody, make sure everybody's good and ready to get here. Today felt like that, like we should have checked in, like everybody's kind of like, so that's why I got stuck on the God I Need You song. Because a lot of you came in and you were like, this is a rough one. <laughs> I don't know how I got here, but I'm here and this is a rough one. And whew, we really need Holy to show up today. Who in that boat? Amen. God, we need you to show up today. Yep. We're all there. So let's take a minute and let's pray. God, you hear these people say they need you. They don't need Christy. They don't need a show. They need you. They need you to show up and be real for them right now and in every moment that they face. They need your spirit to speak comfort, peace, joy, and love. They need your spirit to help them when they feel like, okay, that's it, I'm done. They need you. We need you. Let your spirit be in this place. Touch every heart. The happy ones, the sad ones, they're somewhere in between ones, all of the hearts. Let your spirit minister today. Bless these people for coming with all that they have and all that they are to be in your presence, to seek your face, so that they can leave here and say they've been in the presence of God. We thank you. In your many names we pray. Amen. Amen. So, catch up lesson for you because you kind of, so, Advent started last week. Advent means waiting. It sounds like it could be a movie, The Waiting. <laughs> and we talked about how for some people that means waiting on all of the, like, big time Jesus got to come back and cure the world of everything, second coming of Christ. And for other people, it's about us. It's about us finally opening up to holy in a way that as above, so below. So this week... Like last week, we look at prophecies, we look at the stories that lead us to the big event, right? And in December, the big event is what? Don't say Santa Claus coming down the chimney. The chair's in there. Y'all better not say it. <laughs> my birthday. <laughs> Did you say something? Yeah, I said my birthday. Your birthday? Okay, well, yeah, that's a big event. But I don't think the Bible's pointing to that. <laughs> it could be. Though. Are you sure? It totally could be. Okay. <laughs> of Jesus. So before Jesus could come, there was another birth that had to happen. Anybody know the story? Okay. There was this old couple, Zachariah and Elizabeth. Zachariah was in the priestly order, right? So Zachariah worked at the temple. He would go in and minister before the altar. So Zachariah is in the temple, and the angel of God appears to Zechariah and says, Hey, you and Elizabeth, y'all are going to have a kid. It'll be a boy named John. And Zechariah said, But we old. We old. What you mean, Elizabeth? What you mean we're going to have a kid? The angel said, God says, that's how it's going to be. And now, because of your little word, the but, now you will not speak another word until the arrival of your son. <clears throat> so Zechariah goes mute. Comes out of the temple. The people are like, what took you so long? You've been in there forever. Zechariah can't say anything. So then all the people are like, well, he must have seen a vision. Must have. Because that's the only thing that would make this happen. Because he's making these wild gestures, you know, playing charades, trying to get them to figure it out. And they're like, okay, so Zechariah has been in the presence of God, and we're just going to have to leave him be. So then in Luke chapter 1, is where we pick up, actually all of that is in Luke chapter 1. We pick up at verse 57. When the time came for Elizabeth to deliver, she gave birth to a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard that God had been merciful to her, they shared her joy. When all had assembled for the circumcision on the eighth day, they intended to name the baby after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up. No, he is to be 
called John. They pointed out to her, but no one in your family has this name. Then they made signs to the father to find out what he wanted the child to be named. The father asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. They were all astonished. Immediately, Zechariah's mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed and he began to speak in praise of God. So what happened? A baby's born. The baby that the angel had told Zechariah about and Zechariah said what? But. But, no, we can't, we're old. Then Elizabeth says his name is John and all the people go, but... You don't have anybody named that in your family. So see, tradition was that you named the child after the other males that are in your family tree, in your family lineage. You named them one of those names. Ain't no John in the tree. And Elizabeth's talking about naming the baby John. And that, whoa, 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 Elizabeth. This ain't how we do things. This ain't how it works. We ain't never done it this way. Why are you changing it? Sound familiar? One little bitty word, but, and one great big God. See, Zachariah was thinking normal, right? Dude, I'm old. There ain't no way I'm, ain't no way I'm making no baby. Ain't no way she birthing no baby. It ain't happening. Nature says once you reach a certain age, these things no longer work. And the angel's like, yeah, well, watch this. One little bitty word, but, one great big God. Then the people, you can't name your kid that. That's not what we do. One little bitty word, but, and one great big God. See, everybody has those moments where God has called them to something or has told them something and revealed something to them. And they try to step into it, and the first thing that happens is all their well-meaning, very nice friends go, but now you know we ain't never did it that way before. It ain't going to work. You can't do that. It's not the way we do things. But what are you thinking? But, 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 hear my message. Don't be the but. Just don't. <laughs> don't be those people. When somebody's excited because God has shared something with them and has put something in their heart, the direction that they're supposed to go, when they're given a voice that might seem a little wild and prophetic and you don't really want to follow it, don't be the butt. Don't be the one that goes, but you can't do that. But you ain't smart enough. But you ain't friendly enough. You ain't got enough money. You ain't got enough flash. You ain't got enough pizzazz. You can't. You can't. Don't be the butt. The butt is a little bitty word that causes a whole heck of a lot of problems. Because it destroys hope. It destroys peace. Because instead of being the people that go, you know what? You're right. If God said it, by goodness, it can happen. Instead of saying those things, wait a minute. So if we start church at 11, we're supposed to be out by noon. What you mean you're going to preach till 1230? <laughs> That's not how it works. It's not how we do things. See, God made Zechariah a promise. God said, Zechariah, you're going to have a boy. You're going to name him John. And now, Zechariah, let me tell you what your boy is going to do. Your boy is going to be a prophet. Your boy is going to lead the way. He goes first. The Messiah will follow. He goes and says, guess what? There's somebody coming that I ain't even close to. I will baptize you. But what he's going to bring to the party is totally different and you need it. And I'm just here to tell you, get ready. It's a coming. What would have happened if all the people said, but John, hmm. that's not how we do things. We don't go dipping in no rivers. <laughs> what you doing eating loaf, John? He was a prophet and his job was to prepare the way. Zechariah had how many months of silence to comprehend the promise that God had given? Silence, where he can't say anything to anybody. He can't, he can't be the butt. He can't speak it anymore. He's silent. 
silent before God, silent before the promise that God has made. Let me tell you something. When God makes a promise, it can't be taken back. It just is. God has made you promises. God has promised you, you know what? You're going to get through it. Don't know what it is, but you're going to get through it. I mean, I don't know what it is. God knows what it is. I don't know what it is. You're going to get through it because God said so. When God promises us things, that's the end of it. There's no, well, let me fish that back in. Hmm. Let me let me wind that back up. I got them on the hook now. I'm going I'm to reel them in. We done. No. So Zechariah for months is silent with the knowledge that a son is coming. And that once his son comes, guess what else? The Messiah. The promised one. The one who's going to break every chain. The one who's going to teach the world what love really is. The one who's going to bring hope. The one who's going to unite people. The one who's going to come and say, this isn't who we are. This is who we are. Zachariah is sitting there in silence. Knowing all of this. Knowing that the greatest day in history is coming. And he can't tell us so. Hmm. But he also can't question See, sometimes God puts something in your heart and God tells you this is what's going to happen. And the first thing you do is, but. And the second thing you do, or sometimes it will be the first thing, depending on how you operate, you got to go tell somebody. <laughs> Guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> Guess what's going to happen? Talk me out of this, because God's got to be crazy, right? <laughs> we don't do things like this. Lunatics don't get up and do the things that God is saying this person's going to do, right? We don't do this. And yet God is calling. Maybe sometimes it's because God has to call people who we wouldn't normally look at and go, oh yeah, they're the one. Because looking and going, oh, Tom's the one. He looks the part. He has the knowledge. Sets it up. So that God doesn't get to go, let's shake this up. Mm. I'm not going to always be working through only the people you think look the part. I'm not always going to pick the people who smell the nicest. I'm not always going to pick the people that make the most sense to you and your human minds. I'm going to pick the people who will stand up instead of saying, but God, say yes, God. I'm going to pick the people who go, okay, I don't get it, but I'll go. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth wasn't a but. Gabriel tells Elizabeth, you're going to have a kid. Elizabeth goes, what? Hmm. She's joyful. She's laughing. Elizabeth has the child. And Elizabeth's still happy and laughing. And I bet if I had written the story instead of the people that did write the story, it would have said, I don't know what the hell are y'all God doing, but this is pretty cool. I just had a baby. <laughs> and my kid will grow into the man. Who baptizes Jesus before Jesus begins his ministry? His ministry that does what? Brings healing. Brings hope. Brings life. See, all of y'all come in here this morning and some of y'all was dragging. Y'all still, some of you a little bit dragging now, but it's okay. Y'all came in dragging and God's like, okay, I got a word for you today. And some of you's like, but God, I ain't even awake yet. Don't be the but. Don't do it. When you say but, do you know what you're doing? You're, you're trying to stop it. It's like you put a roadblock. God says, hey, Sally, I'm going to do this. And then Sally says, but God. And then God stands there. Well, now i got to go around you. Why you got to make it difficult? Mm -hmm. Why couldn't you just say, okay, let's go, let's do it? Now let's take it a step further. What if Sally, God says, Sally, I want to use you in a new way. This is what I want you to do. And God lays it out. And Sally goes and tells Marcy. And instead of Marcy going, yeah, that sounds good, let's do that, Marcy goes, but Sally, hmm. but Sally, don't be the butt. The butt stops the flow of the spirit. The butt stops the magic. The butt stops you from being who you're meant to be. The butt stops your potential. Because the more you're butting, the more you're doubting. In the silence, 
Zechariah meditated. Because see, when it gets really quiet and it's just you and God, guess what happens? You pay more attention. Because your mouth ain't moving as much. Mm -hmm. You're hearing. You're not blah, 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 blah. You're hearing God speak to you. So Advent is the season of waiting. What can we be? What can we become? What is the promise? Are you listening? Or are you sitting there going, but, but God, but Kdale, that ain't how. But Joni, come on. What are the odds? I mean, our chance of success is what? Like next to nothing. What do you mean you're going to go do that? Do you know how many other people want to do that? What makes you think you're going to be successful at it? Want me to tell you what makes you successful at it? God calls you. If God calls you and tells you that's what you're supposed to do, guess what you better be doing? If God calls you and says, this is your job, this is what you're going to do, you better step into it and go do it. Because it means no matter how many other people are going to do the same thing, God has chosen to use you in that moment, in that time period, and you're the voice. You're the voice that has to say whatever it is that God says has to be said. And when you go, but God, you're basically saying, your promise sounds good and all, but I don't want it. <laughs> Give it to somebody else. Like, my mama on Christmas morning would come into the living room and she'd start handing out the packages. When she would pull out the biggest package from under the tree, do you think me or my brother was like, I don't want it? <laughs> Is it mine? <laughs> do I get it? <laughs> Why are we not like that with God's gifts, with God's promises? When God says, this is who I call you to be, this is what I want you to do, why are we not going, is it mine or is it yours? Mm -hmm. I want it. Maybe we could share it. Maybe we could do that. Why are we not as excited about doing the work of God as we are about getting and receiving those gifts on Christmas morning? God's gifts are way more important than any other gift you will receive at any other time. Because God's call is irrevocable. That means can't nobody take it back from you. It means when God says, I love you, you're mine. Nobody gets to rip you away. Hmm. It means when God says, I'm going to make a way and you're going to walk it and it's going to be good. Nobody gets to stop you. You get to walk it. You get to own it. You get to be the best version of you that you can be because God has called you to it. I feel some things. Don't be the butt. And if you are the butt, here's what I need you to do. Go silent before God. Don't say another word. Just go quiet. And while you're quiet, trust that God will reveal God's self to you. Because see, I can stand up here and be funny and loud and whatever else. But I can't make you comprehend, fully understand, fully embrace the call of God. Only God can do that for you. God will use me. God will use each of you to reach other people. But you can't make them get the message. You can only say this is the message. You are chosen. You are perfect as you are. You are loved now. And forever. You are good enough. You know how many people are walking through life thinking they're no good? All because they're listening to all the people around them going, but, hmm. but. Let me tell you what you can do with your butt. No, I'm not going to tell you. That would be bad. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't be the butt. Don't use the butt. God is wanting to do things. And we keep sitting back and we keep watching numbers. And we keep going, how is God ever going to do all those things? We don't see it. How does it happen? How will this be created? Instead of saying, I ain't got a dang clue, but I'm in it. 
Amen. I'm in it. I'm going to ride it and ride it and ride it until God says I ain't riding it no more. And when God says get off, then we'll get off. Mm -hmm. But as long as God calls us and says thrive, this is what you're supposed to do. We have to do it. And if you're sitting in the seats saying, but, we got to talk. Because you either got to get with us or you got to get the hell out of the way. Amen. And it ain't just here. It ain't just thrive. It's, it's bigger. If the church called by God, the entirety, can't get with the program, can't do what God is saying has to be done, they got to move. They got to go. They got to get out of the way. And the people who are willing to say, yes, God, and who are willing to say, I will believe, I will do whatever you say, those are the people we got to follow. Those are the people who have to jump in this thing and go, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And the rest of us are going to go, holy cow, we've never done things this way. <laughs> and then the butt will be, but it's pretty cool, ain't it? It's promises. And how do promises work? You have to receive them. Zechariah was promised a son. A son who would be a prophet. A son who would prepare the way for John the Baptist. I mean, for Jesus. He was John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. It was a promise. And because Zechariah was a priest, he knew all of the other promises. He knew that God had promised Israel that they would be God's people. That God would remove the mountains and make all of the ways flat so that Israel could walk on solid ground. He knew that God had promised Israel that they would be way more than they ever thought they would be. And for months he couldn't say anything. So guess what he could do on circumcision day? Blessed are you, the most high God of Israel, for you have visited and redeemed your people. You have raised up a mighty Savior for us, as you promised, through the mouths of your holy ones, the prophets of ancient times. Salvation from our enemies and from the hands of all our foes. You have shown mercy to our ancestors by remembering the holy covenant you made with them. Covenant is another word for promise. The oath you swore to Sarah and Abraham, granting that we, delivered from the hands of our enemies, might serve you without fear, in holiness and justice, in your presence, all our days. And you, now he's talking to the baby, and you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before our God to prepare the way for the promised one, giving the people the knowledge of salvation through forgiveness. Such is the tender mercy of our God, who from on high will bring the rising sun to visit us, to give light to those who live in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Zechariah finally got to talk, and when he got to talk, he started reminding them God promised us. God said, God will do. And then, after he probably did a little jig or two, mm -hmm. he picks that baby up and says, and you, my kid, this is who you're going to be. And I know, because God told me so. You can speak over your children. You can speak over your life. And you can say, God promised. And that's it. We ain't going to believe the but. We ain't going to believe the negative Nellies. We're going to believe that God called us and we're going to do the things God called us to do. So what are those things? What are we supposed to do? Who are we supposed to be? Well, as a community, who you're supposed to be is Thrive MCC. What does that mean? It means... You are supposed to show people the way. You are supposed to be the people who say, yes, God. 
You are supposed to be the people that give love, hope, joy, and peace to everybody in this community that you meet. And if you're not doing that, if you're purposely choosing to be the butt, come talk with your preacher. Because I want to talk to you. If you're purposely choosing things that will harm other people, come talk to me. I have some things you need to know. Because you see, God didn't call you to cause destruction. God didn't cause you to hurt people. God didn't call you to put you in a place where you could do damage. God called you to be a force of love, a force of healing, a force of reckoning that the world needs. That's who God called you to be. And ask me how I know. Because God called me. And God told me. You're going to go to Thrive. And together, as a family, this is who you will be. Once you realize it and recognize it and accept it, you should be like Zechariah. It should be party on. Because you know that what God has put you into is going to be amazing good. Don't be the butt. Don't allow the butt to come in and steal the promises, the joy, the love, the peace, all the good stuff that God has laid out before you. Embrace it. Don't butt it. Hold on to it. Don't let go of it. That's one of the great things about this time of year. You can convince people to believe in a way that you can't convince them to believe almost any other time of the year. It's wild. Their hearts are open to it. People are open to love. They're open to being happy. Your job is that every day of the year. Not just when there's the funny stuff, the funny ties and the ho-ho-hos and the reindeers and all that stuff. Every day, living the promises of God. Every day, believing who God has called you to be. Every day, choosing to take the steps that keep you on that path. Every day, choosing to say, I ain't got time for no buts. I ain't got time. I only have time to say, yes, God, show me your way. And that's the way I'll walk in. Every day. That's what I'm waiting on. That's what my season of Advent is about. I'm waiting on all of us collectively to get fired up about being that. Being who God says we're supposed to be. And when that happens, y'all better watch out because a white girl that don't know a dang thing about how to dance might break out in a dance. And all the people say, Amen. Amen.